Dave here again, another video tutorial for everybody. This one is going to be how to basically stack pictures. I do a lot of light painting now, uh, just because of the certain look that I can get out of it, and the fact that it is so easy to set up and do. Um, basically, I use a fluorescent trouble light and a power inverter for my vehicle. It's just a 100 watt power inverter on the trouble light. And you basically walk past the car um, in as many directions as you want to light whatever you want. Um, in this specific case here, I walk by the side of the car. I walk by over the middle of the car to cover the hood and to cover the roof. And then I'll walk by the left side of the car or the front as well as the ground. And make sure everything has even coverage. Uh, if you look here, 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 and here, you can see that the trouble light has lit various different things in five different shots. And basically, I'm just going to show you how to put it all together. Now we have Photoshop open here, and Photoshop's pretty good with layer stacking. So you're going to click File go down to the scripts option and load the files into stack and basically that's going to throw everything into one document for you uh, when you click browse images select your images which I have already exported here and if you want you can attempt to automatically align the source images just depending if you're doing nighttime long exposures maybe sometimes the tripod gets bumped so hit OK and right now it's building just loading here so I'm gonna drag my layers right here and you see I have all three pictures here right here I have the trouble light exposing pretty much the front of the car and the side as well as the rims. Uh, what I like most about this shot is the fact that the ground has all been exposed the way I want it. Same thing with this one. Mostly this side has been exposed. And this one here, most of the top has been exposed as well as the hood. And if you look closely, you can notice uh, a pretty good uh, light streak going down the side of the car and the side window so basically from here what you need to do is decide what picture is what for this one I'm probably going to end up using the sides of the vehicle and the ground so what I like to do is just label my file I name it ground side this one right here um, that's hard to say. I kind of like the way the roof line looks right here and the B pillar. So I'm just going to label this one side B pillar. And right here is where I got that nice light streak. So this one will be light streak and top. Now the first step is finding out what one is going to be your background. Obviously this one because there is no light streak from the trouble light that I used in the background. So I'll rename this one again and add background and drag that one to the bottom. So I'm going to grab the eraser. Uh, usually maybe 30-40% worth of flow and take out everything in the background that you don't want from the other photos open this one and I'm gonna erase all the background off that one as well so this one right here directly comparing it's got a real good front exposure and the ground I really like the ground but I'm 
kind of like in the wheels off of this picture right here. So for this one, I'm just going to zoom in, grab a smaller eraser with more flow, and take out the tires here. Well, this car was picked up in 1979. Uh, an old lady bought it as a 50th birthday present for herself. And I'm not sure who bought it after her, but another old lady after the first one picked it up. And then the car owner that has it now picked it up some years ago. It was parked on the side of the road with a for sale sign on it. And like I said, made in 1979, so it's about 31 years old. It's got uh, 49,000 original kilometers on it. And I don't believe it's ever been driven or parked in snow or rain. Aside from needing uh, basic waxing to get rid of swirl marks and, and some work on the front bumper caps and rear bumper caps for... Uh, oxidization of the paint and the minor engine tune-up. The car is in pretty good shape. I'm just going to come in and do this rim as well. It's kind of weird when you're erasing layers from layers and even though the camera hasn't moved, just the way the light reflects and shines on different things, it makes it look like you're looking at it in a totally different perspective. I just like photography for the simple fact you can do anything you want and there really is no rules to what you want to do you just do what feels good so there we got the wheels that I like now I really want to incorporate that light streak it just gives gives the side of the car an extra bit of definition I'm kinda liking the roof too so what I think I'm going to do is right here you see a separation basically this is just a body line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything on the top half of this body line so when you look at it afterwards you're going to see the definition and the car is not going to look so flat it's going to have more of a three-dimensional appearance Actually, sorry, I'm erasing the bottom. Yeah, so I'm going to throw that up there. Okay. I'm going with a large eraser. What I like to do when I'm blending the layers into each other with big pieces of the car is I'll go down to about 5%. And I'll just gradually work my way through. and erase little bit by little bit so that way I can see the progression of it and if I'm missing anything it's a lot harder to make a mistake if you do it this way So if you look closely, you can start to see a little bit of definition in the car. It's starting to take a little bit of shape here. I do have to erase these wheels, so I'm just going to quickly rub over those. So you sit back and look, and the car's got a bit of definition. So too much of a cool bluish hue or a color tone but I can fix that afterwards I 
I'm undecided if I want that light streak in the photo or not. I don't think I do. I'm going to take that out. I, yeah, I, kind of partial to it. It really depends on the car in a shot. Yeah, that looks good. Now I need to put the roof in. So I just need to come in and erase this layer so that we can see the roof. Now this one layer is a little bit too hot so what you have to end up doing is kind of blending it in which means a larger brush and setting your flow way down maybe two three percent and just gradually working the eraser in the more you work it in the more it blends I'm going to come in and do the rest of this here. used to be a big user of strobes and when I saw light painting and what you could do with light painting I haven't touched strobes hardly ever uh, my biggest complaint is being able to see the hot spots um, basically the light kinda looks like a triangle um, in the center and closest to the light you'll have the most power and it's qu quite a taper off to the sides the more the light spreads but when you're using light painting everything's getting equal light there's no uneven spread of light there's no hot spots from flash bulbs everywhere and it's easier to set up and do light painting however using strobes has its pluses as well just for sheer light power and the fact that you can almost put them anywhere but sometimes it's good to just pack them away bring out the trouble light, get a bit creative do something different because doing the same old thing every time you take pictures is really boring and people do notice it so you can keep yourself updated with stuff that's new and stuff that's fresh you'll be a happening photographer now here's where I need to blend it some more just to kinda of make it look even get a nice even light fall off I think I'll have it end right about there I turn this down a bit more How does that look? It's alright, I just need to blend that in a little bit more. 